you can easily improve your voice recordings in Adobe Audition by following five simple steps. I'll explain each step in detail so you can follow along without any trouble. This process is essential for all kinds of voiceover work, whether it's audiobook narration, professional voiceovers, content creation, podcasts, or anything else involving voice recordings. If you'd like a PDF with all the steps and screenshots, you can get it to your email. At the end of the description, you will find the link to get this PDF. Enter your email, and I'll send it to you. Now, let's dive into the process of improving the sound. But first, let me show you a demo of how much better it will sound. I will play the original and processed sound alternatively, and you will hear the difference. About noon the next day the boys arrived at the dead tree. They had come for their tools. Tom was impatient to go to the haunted house. Huck was measurably so, but suddenly said, Looky here, Tom. Do you know what day it is? Tom mentally ran over the days of the week, and then quickly lifted his eyes with a startled look in them. My, I never once thought of it. But Huck... Well, I didn't neither, but all at once it popped on to me that it was Friday. You just heard the improved sound. The improvement I demonstrated was just a general enhancement, but by following the steps in this video, you'll be able to achieve the same results. I've also created presets that can upgrade your voice with just one click. You can get five presets like clear and crisp voice, rich and full voice, movie trailer or cinematic voice, etc. If you'd like to try these presets, you can find them in my shop. Installing the presets is straightforward. All the necessary links and information are in the presets description. You can even get a free demo to hear how your voice will sound using these presets. Just send your audio file to the email address provided in the description. These presets are my pre-built solutions to help you achieve better sound quality instantly. Now, let's learn how to process your recordings for dramatic improvement in Adobe Audition. The key to great audio lies in these four effects. However, they must be applied in the correct order and with the right settings. Otherwise, the audio could end up sounding worse instead of better. For beginners, I would suggest to follow this order. It will make the processing easy, and you can use the configurations I will show. The recording you see on the screen is a raw recording. Raw recording means it has not been processed yet. The first step in this process is to use the normalize effect. There are two main reasons for using this effect. The first reason is to set the peak level of the audio to a standard value. The standard value for the peak level is minus 3 dB. The peak level refers to the loudest point in your audio, and you can identify it by looking at the waveform. In this recording, the current peak level is about minus 12 dB. By applying the normalize effect, I can adjust the peak level to minus 3 dB. When I normalize the audio to minus 3 dB, the peak will reach that level, and the rest of the audio will also adjust proportionally. After applying normalize to this recording, the waveform will appear taller because the volume is being increased. I will apply normalize from the favorites menu. Favorites has shortcuts to several effects. I will select the option to normalize the audio to minus 3 dB. After doing this, you will notice that the peak now reaches minus 3 dB and the other parts of the waveform have also grown taller. However, normalizing does not always mean the waveform will get taller. Whether the height increases or decreases depends on the original peak level of the audio. Sometimes, the peak level may actually decrease after applying the normalize effect. I will skip the technical details of how the normalize effect works, but it is important to remember that setting the peak level to minus 3 dB is necessary for the next steps of the process. By normalizing to minus 3 dB at the beginning, you can follow the same settings that I will use later. There is another reason I use normalize as the first step. Usually, when we record audio, the volume tends to be lower than it should be. When the audio level is too low, the noise level is also low, and it becomes difficult to identify certain problems in the recording. By normalizing the audio to minus 3 dB, the volume reaches a standard level, making common issues like noise easier to detect. The next step will be noise reduction. However, you should set your expectations right around noise reduction. Noise reduction can significantly degrade the audio quality if not done correctly. Also, it is not possible to remove every type of noise from the audio. You cannot reduce that significantly if you have irregular background noise like dog barking or traffic noise. If you are looking for professional-grade audio, you must have to record without any irregular background noise. There is no exception of that. However, besides irregular background noise, there is another type of noise called white noise or hissing noise. If the hissing noise is too loud, it will again affect the audio quality. Your recording should have as little hissing noise as possible. You have to set your environment right to capture as little hissing noise as possible. Still, some white noise or hissing noise will be present in the recording. 
You have to reduce that noise to an acceptable level using noise reduction. Adobe Audition has a bunch of noise reduction effects. We will use the denoise. Denoise is easy to use and serves the purpose well for reducing hissing noise. You have to configure the amount of noise you want to reduce. The higher you set the amount, the more noise will be reduced. However, high reduction in noise will result in poor quality audio. I suggest setting the amount below 40%. On average, recording a value of around 30 to 40% will do a satisfactory job. There is also another configuration for processing focus. If you know which frequency area is causing the noise, you can set the focus on that frequency area. I am using the first option, the flat line, meaning the denoise will be active on the whole frequency area. I will keep it in that way. I will apply this setting for denoise. After denoise, I will use an EQ effect. EQ is the process of manipulating volumes by frequency. That means you can increase the volume of some frequencies and decrease the volume of other frequencies. EQ is a very vast topic, and I will use a simple EQ for this improvement. I will use a high pass filter. High pass filter means, I will be lowering volume of lower frequencies, and let pass the higher frequencies as it is. That sounds too technical, but let me show you what I mean. There are different types of EQ effects available in Adobe Audition, and I will use parametric equalizer. Parametric equalizer is flexible enough to manipulate any frequency. Though we are using a very basic EQ, knowing to use the parametric equalizer will help you in moving forward. You see my last use curve here, and I will get back to the default settings. You will understand what changes I am making for a high pass filter. You can see a flat blue line with some numbers or letters on it. These numbers or letters are called bands. Each band controls a certain frequency. You can see each band is associated with a frequency here. You can change which band to represent which frequency. There are advanced controls, and we will only see a basic EQ. For the basic EQ, I will use a high pass filter. You can see a band named HP here which is currently inactive. I will click on it and the high pass filter will become active. You can notice the curve is cutting some lower frequencies in this region. The place where this cut will happen is set by frequency. Currently it is 40 Hz. For voice recording the frequency can be 70 or 80 Hz. If you know about fundamental frequency of human voice, then you will understand the reason. Fundamental frequency means the lowest frequency generated by our voice. Generally, humans do not generate frequencies below 80 Hz. If your audio has some energy below 80 Hz, then it is most likely some kind of noise. If you use a high pass filter around 70 or 80 Hz, those types of noise will be reduced. I will adjust the frequency for high pass filter. There are many advanced use of EQ, like making a voice clear or crisp or rich. But those are a bit advanced topic and I will discuss that in a later video. For this beginner friendly tutorial, I will suggest you to use a high pass filter like this. Adobe Audition is a top notch audio editing software and you should be able to use it fully. If you are looking for a detailed course on Adobe Audition, I will put a link in the description. My EQ curve is now set and I will apply this. If I recap the order of the effect so far, it is normalize, denoise and then parametric equalizer. The order of the effects I am using in this video is a beginner friendly sequence. If you use this sequence, you are most likely to get an improved audio. The next effect I will add is a compressor effect. There are several ways to add a compressor effect to the audio. For example, you can see several compressor effect like single band compressor, multi band compressor, tube modeled compressor etc. However, I will use the dynamics to add a compressor effect. I am using dynamics as it is simple to configure. You can see three things in the dynamics, auto gate, compressor, and expander. We will only use the compressor here. You may ask why we have to use the compressor. Well, a compressor reduces the dynamic range of audio. In simple terms, a compressor lowers the volume gap between louder and softer talk. That improves the overall listening experience. Because you will hear every part of the audio comfortably after applying a compressor. However, too much compression will make the audio sound unnatural. It is about finding a balance that works for your recording. If your goal is to be in a professional voiceover or want pro quality audio, the compressor and EQ will help you a lot. But the compressor and EQ are a bit complex concepts, and you will have to put some effort into learning them. For this tutorial, I will use a preset as a starting point. I will use soft compression. I will not use the soft compression as it is, and will modify some of the configurations. Please note that after selecting soft compression, the auto gate and expander are not selected, only the compressor is selected. It is important that the compressor is only checked. I will configure the threshold and ratio and keep the other value as it is. 
For a typical recording, the threshold around minus 15 to minus 18 works okay. If the audio level crosses the threshold, the compressor will be active. I have set it to minus 15.4 dB. If the audio crosses minus 15.4 dB, the compressor will start compressing the audio. The lower threshold you set, the longer the compressor will be active on the audio. How much compression it will do depends on the ratio. Usually, a ratio between 2 to 4 works well for a voice recording. You may need to experiment with the ratio and threshold to find out the best compressor settings for your recording. Please note that I use such a setting because I normalized the audio to minus 3 dB at the start. If the peak level of the audio was different, these settings may not work. I will keep the other settings as it is and apply the compressor. The compressor is applied and the overall waveform looks more balanced than before. However, the compressor alters the peak level of the audio. After applying a compressor, you have to normalize the audio to get proper levels. I will normalize it to minus 3 dB. The audio is now fully processed and improved a lot. We can verify that by listening the improved sound. I will play and alternate between the original and improved sound. About noon the next day the boys arrived at the dead tree. They had come for their tools. Tom was impatient to go to the haunted house. Huck was measurably so, but suddenly said, Looky here, Tom. Do you know what day it is? Tom mentally ran over the days of the week, and then quickly lifted his eyes with a startled look in them. My, I never once thought of it. But Huck? Well, I didn't neither. But all at once it popped on to me that it was Friday. Blame it, a body can't be too careful, Huck. We might have gotten to an awful scrape tackling such a thing on a Friday. Might. Better say we would. There's some lucky days, maybe, but Friday ain't one of them. Any fool knows that. I don't reckon you was the first that found it out, Huck. Well, I never said I was, did I? And Friday ain't all, neither. I had a rotten bad dream last night. Dreamt about rats. No. Sure sign of trouble. Did they fight? No. Well, that's good, Huck. When they don't fight, it's a sign that there's... This was the overall process to improve the audio quality as a beginner. If you haven't grabbed the PDF yet, I highly recommend to do so. You can follow the process from the PDF a couple of times, and your skill will become automatic. If you want professionally built presets in Adobe Audition, you can get them from my shop page. The presets will help you achieve a better sound with just a click. For a better deal, grab the Adobe Audition bundle. The bundle has the presets you just saw and a detailed Adobe Audition course. You will also get a custom professional EQ and preset personalized to your voice with the bundle. The bundle is a no-brainer if you are looking for the best resources on Adobe Audition for professional quality work. You can also email me to learn more about the bundle. My email address and all the links are in the video description.